Hi guys and welcome to another art supply review video. In this video I'll be demonstrating and reviewing the Winsor & Newton drawing inks. This is the William set, um, but I also have three other inks that I have bought separately. As always, all opinions are my own. I'm not affiliated with Winsor & Newton. So like my previous review video, um, the way that we're going to do this is go, we'll go over the packaging to see what the claims that Winsor & Newton make about these inks. Then we'll go into swatching where I'll describe the properties. And then um, finally, I will show you a demonstration of me using these inks and what kind of effects you can achieve with them. So this is the packaging that both the William and the Henry sets come in. It's a, a plastic box and inside the box there were eight small um, carbon boxes like this with um, different designs depending on what ink it was, the colour of the ink. And then inside these boxes are um, the little pots of ink. They are very cute little glass bottles. They're 14 millilitres each and you have eight of them. Now before I forget to mention it's really important to make sure that the lids are firstly on tightly but also that the um, threads of the lids and the little sort of indents are really clean and that also goes um, for the, the uh, glass parts as well. Now if they're not clean and you have lots of ink stuck on them, the ink will dry and it becomes incredibly difficult to open and um, anybody with weak hands or even regular people <laughs> are going to struggle to open them and I've heard of people breaking their ink bottles, the lids, from trying to open them. So do clean them carefully um, between uses. It's also a good idea to store them upright so that the ink can't leak through the sides and uh, make it difficult for the um, cap to be removed. So also don't tilt them like I'm doing now. <laughs> On to what the packaging um, has to say. So um, it just says drawing inks in a very variety of different languages here. And on the back it says Windra and Newton drawing inks are formulated from a series of water soluble dyes in a superior shellac solution. These inks can be applied with a brush or pen and are widely used by illustrators, designers, calligraphers and artists. Care should be taken when using an airbrush or fountain pen to ensure that the ink does not dry within it. So what inf information can we glean from that blurb? Um, well it's made in a shellac solution so I think that would mean that um, these inks are permanent once dried and they are also made from water dyes which means that they're not going to be light fast and um, dye based products aren't very light fast whereas pigment based products tend to be a lot more light fast. So it also says enclosed are uh, illustrations featuring different techniques so we'll have a quick look at those. So here's that leaflet or rather just one side of paper. Um, it says uh, traditional pen and ink drawing with black Indian ink. So um, they can be used with dip pens or fountain pens, I suppose. Brush and ink sketching in colour. And it looks like um, they're showing dilution of the ink, so that's another thing that you can achieve with these inks. Graphical images and calligraphy and technical app applications using dilute washes. To be honest, I find this information a little bit lacklustre. I think they could have included a lot more information about the product um, in the set. Um, colour swatches, what other colours are available in the series. Um, perhaps like mini tutorials, that sort of thing in included. Of course, all that information can be found online, but I really like having it um, as a paper version with the product. So I just wanted to show you quickly how I store my inks. This is what I store them in. It's a uh, chocolate tin, um, quite a small one. I think this is a really good way to store them because um, it keeps them upright and because it's made out of metal, if any of them leak, um, chances are it's not going to um, leak out and damage anything that you have underneath it. I like keeping, keeping the boxes um, because I think they're just too stinking cute and um, I also have a number of uh, pipettes along with these inks because I find it a lot more um, easy to remove the ink with a pipette rather than the brush. 
So in the description box I'll leave a link to uh, where I got these pipettes from and I'll also leave a um, link to Amazon um, for the set that I have here. Now the other thing with pipettes is that I've heard that if you dip a brush in and out of the inks um, that you can end up contaminating the inks quite easily. One person that I've seen talk about this online was actually talking about biological contamination, i.e. your inks rotting inside the bottle, which I think is a bit strange, but I suppose it could happen. And um, the other contamination risk is um, uh, crossing over different colours from um, your palette into your ink bottles. So yes, definitely recommend pipettes. So here I am now swatching out all of my colours. As you can see in each of the boxes, I've already painted down a line of black ink, and this is in order to test the opacity or translucency of each of the inks. I also do a number of swatches for each of the colours. The first swatch um, at the top of each box is the pure colour, so I haven't diluted it at all apart from applying it with a slightly damp brush. The line underneath the top one would be the um, half dilution, so I've diluted it with um, one part water and the one underneath that um, is diluted with three parts water. Unfortunately, the dilution didn't work very well for some of the inks because I didn't mix them up properly, so if you see that some of the weak dilutions appear more vibrant, um, that's just my fault. I also missed recording some of the footage here, but um, it's pretty self-explanatory, I'm just swatching out the colours. In the bottom right box, I test to see how the inks or the black Indian ink in particular um, works with water and see how it blooms. So let's have a closer look at the colours here now. So canary, yellow, um, brick red and silver did not come in the William set. Um, you can see that when laid down thickly they appear slightly shiny and glossy, but otherwise they dry um, pretty matte. The most opaque of course is the black and the silver. Um, the silver is opaque because of the mica powder that is um, suspended in it. And out of all of them you can get the greatest tonal range from the black Indian ink, purely because it's so pigmented. The black ink blooms wonderfully and um, the black ink also dries very permanently. Here I was really scrubbing at it with a brush with water on it and um, it lifted very slightly but I think you'd really struggle to make the um, black ink once it's dried um, lift off. Something else that I want to point out is that some colours do seem to separate very slightly. Um, the brown here, you can see that the yellow pigment included in the brown um, has separated a little bit there, um, and the same goes for in the green here. Um, I actually quite like that effect, but I can understand that some artists might want to try and avoid that. But in experience, I find the separation of the um, pigments in the ink seem to happen more when you dilute it further, but also if you mix um, different colours together, that can happen. So now we move on to the demonstration part. As you can see, I've sketched out a bird wing butterfly in green color race color pencil, and I'm using Canson uh, Montville watercolor paper for this drawing or painting. So I definitely recommend using a watercolor type of paper um, for these inks or something that can handle wet medium fairly well. Especially if you're doing lots of wet on wet techniques or washes, um, it's really crucial to have your um, paper taped down as well. But I imagine that if you were using a pen and ink um, type technique that you would be able to get away with just using um, a thinner type sketching type paper. Speaking of pen and ink, I'm now working with a dip pen to create um, texture and fine lines in the butterfly's wings. I find that the black Indian ink that comes in a set is absolutely excellent for dip pen work because it has a nice viscosity to it. Its opacity and high pigment load means that it also stands up very well um, with dip pen work. The lines that you create with it are very visible. On the other hand, I find that the other drawing inks, because they're a little bit more transparent and less pigmented, they don't work quite as well with the um, dip pens. They do still work, um, but I find them a little bit more difficult to control because they're a little bit thinner. Um, but, and also that the, the um, effects that you achieve with them are a little bit more subtle. I do believe that Windsor and Newton have a range of calligraphy inks which are designed to be used with dip pens, so if you're interested in calligraphy perhaps those are a better option. So the way that I'm working here is that I'm putting in all of my details in as soon as I possibly can. 
And then once they're dry, I can glaze over top of everything with the desired colours. Later on, you'll see that you can achieve some really beautiful watercolour style effects with these inks. So in general here, I'm uh, working in very light layers. Um, so because of the black Indian ink that comes with the set is so overwhelmingly dark, I map out these large dark areas with a layer of brown first, so that if I do make a mistake it's a little bit easier to cover up. But I also find that laying down a different colour as an underpainting makes the colour that you lay on top um, a little bit more dynamic and interesting. So unlike watercolour inks, these inks are permanent, so that makes it a little bit easier to layer these colours. You don't have to worry so much about lifting your previous layers as you work. As far as value for money is concerned, I think that this set is an excellent um, set for a beginner ink artist. The 8 sets of ink on Amazon retail between £14 and £15, pounds, which for a relatively full range of colour I think is really excellent. There are definitely other brands of ink out there, such as Dr. P.H. Martin's, Ecoline, and the De La Rowney FW series. But with these brands, the bottles seem to be a lot larger, um, usually around 30ml, which means that the initial cost is going to be a lot greater. Personally, I find the 14ml bottle um, size is absolutely perfect for what I use them for. A little goes a very long way, so I don't seem to be getting through them all that quickly and the small size also makes it convenient for storage. I can't comment on the other factors involved with the other brands, such as quality or light fastness, because I haven't tried them myself. But I haven't heard anything negative about the other brands, so I recommend just um, using or trying out what you have available to you, um, what's cheapest, and perhaps uh, pick up a few different brands in open stock if you can to give them a go. So here's what the final ink drawing looks like. I used some uh, white Posca marker to touch up some areas and add a little bit more texture in um, the wings. And I also used a fine liner to um, just clean up the edges a bit because of my hands a little bit shaky with a really fine brush. Um, I could have used a salt technique on the wings to add a little bit more visual interest, but I decided not to. Um, Salt can be applied to wet ink similarly to how you would apply it to water watercolour to achieve a sort of um, blooming effect. Here's an example of that blooming effect um, using different size salt crystals. So to summarise, here's a few positive and ne negative things about these inks. First of all, I really like how vi vibrant and translucent the inks are. I also think that they're really affordable and they're a great alternative to watercolour um, because you can achieve the same effects and also more um, and I think you'd struggle to find a uh, watercolour this vibrant um, at a similar price point. Um, you can get a large variety of effects and um, applications with these inks, for example you can use them with a dip pen and get these watercolour effects with them as well. On the other hand, um, they are not light fast. Um, they are permanent, which can be seen as a positive or negative um, thing, depending on the way you work. And um, because of they are permanent and dry quite um, to form like a stubborn layer, um, you need to take care with your brushes and palettes to make sure they don't get stained or um, damaged from the inks. One final negative would be that they aren't very transportable and unlike watercolour palettes, you can't really bring um, your ink set around with you very easily. So because of all these properties the ink has, um, both positive and negative, I find that the best application for them is in um, quick or fairly quick um, paintings and sketches like this or for colouring in sketchbook studies. So that about concludes things here. If you have any questions feel free to leave those down in the comments. If you found this video helpful please leave it a like and if you have bought or are considering buying these inks please let me know in the comment section also. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already in order to stay tuned for more video reviews, speed paints, tutorials and challenges. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.